everybody. I wanted to show y'all our new addition to our homestead. Three little pigs. This is Becky. That's Patricia. And that's Sarah. Yep, Teresa's already named them. <laughs> These are Asaba and large black crosses. For those of you who are not familiar with these type of pigs, um, the Asaba, these are heritage pigs. And what that means, from my understanding, is uh, these are old school pigs. These are the pigs that our forefathers owned before society evolved into commercially raised industrial farming and all that. Uh, more of the Berkshire and those type of pigs. But anyway, the reason uh, these were, were kind of uh, ignored is because they don't reach slaughter weight as quick as the industrial commercial breeds. But the trade-off is these pigs have a lot better meat. And it's actual meat that a lot of restaurant chefs are looking for nowadays to provide a superior product. Now the Osaba Island hog, there's uh, only a few left in the United States as well as the large black breed. Now like I say, these aren't registered, they're not purebreds. These are crosses between large black and Osaba. But to give you an example, the if you if you look on the livestock conservancy priority list the large black is listed as threatened which uh is the the last on the scale before you get to critical and that's actually where the osaballs are they're listed as critical and that's re referencing their actual numbers that still exist uh, and I'm not sure if that's in the world or if that's just the United States, but um, they're very, very hardy animals. They forage very well. They're more immune to uh, or more uh, resistant to parasites from my understanding. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but uh, we're, we're just learning. A typical pig can reach slaughter weight in about six months. I understand these might take a little longer, seven, eight, maybe nine months tops. But uh, some of the heritage breeds take, you know, like the guinea hogs, I think, take about a year. So we wanted something kind of in between. But we still wanted heritage hogs, that's for sure. So we got these. And uh, they're just getting settled in. They've been here for three days. I uh, wanted to let y'all know that uh, one of the things we learn from our mistakes, and <laughs> like I said, we'll put it out there, and as, as humiliating as it may be, but maybe it'll help others. One of the things we learned right off is you'll see this hog panel here. We, uh, the reason this hog panel is on the outside of the post is we're going to put electric wire eventually on the inside to get them acclimated to that so we can let them out into their paddocks. But uh, for right now, we, we built a 16 foot square pin out of hog panels. And when we brought them home, the little one over there, that Teresa named Patricia, <laughs> she's a Dickens. She was feisty. Um, she jumped on the back of another one and she was able to get high enough on the hog panel to get through one of the larger openings. And away she went. Went down the road and into the woods. We thought for sure we'd lost her. I told Teresa that I raised sheep before and typically when the sheep get out like that, if you can take some legume hay or alfalfa hay or something like that and that they're used to and they love, you can coax them back in. But if you don't get to them very quickly, 
Uh, a lot of times you can lose them. They can get scared by dogs and so forth and, and uh, all of a sudden be miles away. So we were really scared about her. She went off in the woods and on the other side of the road, um, the neighbors all have 10-acre tracks. But behind them, it's just hundreds and hundreds of acres of woods. So <clears throat> we figured she was gone. And lo and behold... About a half an hour, 30, 40 minutes later, here she comes up the road. Unbelievable. Uh, this is show that pigs are very, very intelligent. She came back, wanted to be with her sisters. And um, not that they're actually blood sisters. That little one came from a, a different litter. And uh, she's like right at eight weeks old and the other ones are... A little bit older, nine, ten weeks, I believe. But um, that's just a lesson learned. <laughs> if you're getting piglets, you might need something like this welded wire fencing. We and that's why I put that up after she got out. I went ahead and grabbed the welded wire fencing, put that up. My wife went after her and alerted the neighbors. And if you're getting feeder pigs that are, you know, 30, 40, 50 pounds, I think this hog panel would be okay. They're not so feisty, and they don't really want to jump. At, they're getting to the point where they're, they're really not wanting to jump and try to get through the higher squares. Uh, and, and at 40 pounds, I don't think they can. They can't, they can't fit. But uh, lesson learned, when you're, if you're getting piglets like this, that are eight to 10 weeks old, especially if they're heritage breed, they're a little smaller and they're very feisty. Uh, hog panel is probably not gonna be enough. Uh, you have to put up some, either put some boards up or like in this case, I, I, I fortunately, praise the Lord, I had some two by four welded wire mesh fencing left over from our gardening back there, you see in the previous videos. Um, I went ahead and slapped it up inside this pen and uh, I kept the other two in, and then the next morning, uh, like I say, she came back, but we didn't want to spook her and scare her, so she stayed right here by the pen. And the next morning, I, I grabbed the dog uh, carrier that we brought him home in, and um, it came with a shelf, a wire shelf. So I wired that into the dog trap, like a trap door, and it worked great. Put some food in it, and she about, it took about 20 minutes 30 minutes and finally she was in there and got trapped so was able to get her back in here with her sisters they're just now getting used to the water as you can see there they haven't used that before they had been using I think just uh, puddles <laughs> and so forth but uh, I was a little concerned that they weren't getting enough water but it looks like they are now they're figuring it out but they're absolutely loving it here. You can see the, the rooting that they're doing. We got lots of, of forest. And uh, this is what we're going to eventually release them into after another few weeks. You can see that T-post there. We're gonna run a electric line, a three wire electric fence from that post all the way over to the edge of our property. This is a half an acre out here. So this is just about the middle. And so we'll separate it into a quarter acre paddock here and a quarter acre paddock there. And then after a few months, uh, once they get bigger, we're gonna transfer them back into the back three acres where we'll have several paddocks and we're gonna rotate them. Uh, Lord willing, we'll get some goats. We're looking at getting some Nigerian dwarf goats. And um, we're gonna run a Joel Salatin style uh, Savory Institute style or Allen Savory style uh, rotational grazing in order to, as Allen says, take a more regenerative, holistic management approach with our animals and our soil. But uh, anyway, Lord, like, Lord, like I say, Lord willing, we'll get some dwarf, Nigerian dwarf goats, and then we'll follow that paddock with the pigs and then follow that paddock with chickens so as they rotate around it'll be the goats 
leading the way. The goats move to the next paddock. The pigs will move to the the paddock that had the goats in them. And then the chickens eventually move to the paddock that had the pigs in them. Y'all leave it. Those are your friends. It's Titus and Oliver getting used to the piggies, getting to know them. And uh, they're doing real well. Titus, he's been a, a very, very good guard dog, and, and Olive is very valuable as well to keep him company. Uh, 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 Olive, leave it. I told you leave it. She's a little more skittish than he is. He's Titus understands that I think already that he's supposed to take care of them, and Olive's still a little bit skittish, I guess is the only word for it. Anyway, just wanted to show everybody... I appreciate y'all watching the video. If you like this sort of thing, we're homesteading. Um, the name of our channel is Sustainable Frugal Living. This is Mark, my wife's Teresa. We have chickens as well and gardening. We have a lots of DIY projects. Um, we've done quite a few already in regards to solar energy, rainwater collection, DIY TV antenna, just uh, chicken coops, hoop house structures, different things like that. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, check out our videos. And if you know others that are as well, uh, please sh do share our channel with them and or videos. As well as put on your social media. If you subscribe and hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button, you'll be alerted when we put new videos out. And... We're going to continue on this journey of sustainable frugal living on our homestead out in the woods. And we'd love for you to come along and, and share. If you have comments or suggestions, please leave them below. We appreciate it. And if you have questions, leave those below or just send a private message either way. And uh, I'll answer. I'll answer your questions. We're not experts on any one topic or any one thing, but we've done quite a few different things. And like I said before in the beginning of the video, you can learn from our mistakes. <laughs> we'll put them out there. Uh, Lord knows we've made a few. But that's how you grow and that's how you learn. A lot of times it's easier to learn by your own experiences and mistakes than it is to do everything right the first time. Um, anyway... Appreciate y'all watching. Y'all be good and God bless.